So you want to explore Eorzea with a controller. With the Xbox release of Final Fantasy XIV here, this seemed like a great time to talk about controller targeting. Hey, it's Phil Meyer. If you're new to my channel, this is where I talk about and make guides for some of my favorite games, of which Final Fantasy XIV is one of them. In this video, we're going to talk about how to better target using a controller. Let's get right into it. First, it's hard to target anything if you can't see it. While holding down the left bumper, you can press forward and back on the right stick to adjust your camera zoom. The first type of targeting you'll probably use is called confirm targeting. This is done by pressing the confirm button, which is the bottom face button on your controller. You will select a target based on the direction your character is facing, not the camera, and the type of game object it is. Enemies, NPCs, and points of interest in the game are given priority over other player characters. You can clear your current target with the cancel button, which is the right face button on the controller. Confirm targeting is quick and easy, but once you're dealing with multiple enemies, you'll want to use something else. So let's talk about tab targeting next. While holding down one of the triggers to ready your crossbar, you can press the left and right bumper buttons to cycle through available enemies. This only serves to target enemies as hard targets, and we'll talk more about hard versus soft targets in a moment. You can tailor the way enemies are cycled through by using either ignore depth or cone targeting. This can be changed in your character configuration settings. Ignore depth means that you'll cycle through enemies left to right or right to left on the screen depending on which of the buttons you're using. It doesn't matter how far away the enemy is from your character. With cone targeting, pretend there's an imaginary cone projected in front of your character in the direction your camera is facing. Enemy targets will be given different priorities based on how close they are to your character and how close they are to the center of the cone. Which of these is best really depends on you, and I'd encourage you to try both out and see which one you like most. To target a member of your party, you can press up or down on your directional pad to cycle through the party list. This type of targeting uses soft targeting, so let's explain how that works now. We've already seen what a hard target looks like. There will be a solid arrow pointing towards your target. A soft target is instead indicated with a circle. If you press the confirm button, when something is soft targeted, it will become your hard target. Whenever you use an action and currently have a soft target, it will be used against that soft target. Once the action is performed, your soft target is automatically cleared and it will revert back to your hard target. This allows you to juggle different targets without losing your primary target. As an example, let's say you're in combat fighting an enemy and you want to be able to heal your ally. You can quickly soft target your ally, cast a curative spell, and then you'll continue attacking your hard target automatically. Just like when you only have a hard target, pressing the cancel button when you have a soft target will clear it and revert back to your hard target. Understanding the difference between hard and soft targeting is key. So up and down the directional pad will cycle through the party list, but if you hold down the left bumper while pressing up and down, you can cycle through the aggroing enemies instead. By default, the enemies engaged in battle with you are shown on the left side of your HUD. Cycling through your party list and enemy list does much of what you need early in the game. However, once you get into alliance raids, you can be teamed up with up to 23 other players for a total of 3 parties of 8 players. If you need to target an alliance member, you can again hold the left bumper button and use left and right on your directional pad to cycle through them. You do this more often if you're a healer. I do have to say that alliance target selection is the one part of the game where I felt a little slower with a controller. It isn't necessary as often, but it's worth keeping in mind. Alright, we've talked about how to target enemies and how to use your party list. Let's next talk about filter targeting. Filter targeting is done with the left and right directional buttons on their own. Near your health bar, you'll see a target filter that you currently have enabled. Pressing left and right on the directional pad will cycle through targets of that type. You can customize these filters in character configuration settings. You have the ability to set a target filter for when your weapon is sheathed or when it's drawn. You can manually draw or sheathe your weapon by either pressing the left stick in or by pressing both bumper buttons at the same time. You can imagine that when your weapon is drawn, you may want to filter down to only targeting enemies. And when your weapon is sheathed, you probably don't want to limit that filter. These weapon filters might be enough for many, but I also like to use the advanced target filters. This lets you change your filter types when you press the left bumper and a face button together. I use all four of these face button filters. I have a filter for targeting enemies, another for targeting players that are not in my party, a third filter that lets me target NPCs and objects, and a final filter for targeting everything. Each of these filters has something that they help with. 
For example, here in town I can use the NPCs and Objects filter to quickly target the Etherite Crystal from within a crowd of other players. As you may have picked up from the video here, filter targeting will use soft targeting, just like the party list and enemy list. Next, let's talk about a feature called focus targeting. This is useful for when you want to keep track of a target over a longer period of time, such as a dungeon boss. Your focus targets health and its current action will be shown in the HUD. There are a couple ways you can assign a focus target with a controller. First, once you have something targeted, you can bring up a context menu with the left face button. From that context menu, you can choose focus target. Alternatively, I like to use macros to manage my focus target. I've created one macro for assigning a focus target, and I have another macro that retargets the focus target. I have these set on my hotbar for quick access. As a healer, I find focus targeting very useful for boss fights. It allows me to keep track of what the boss is doing and quickly retarget again to help with DPS. Some healers may prefer to assign the party's tank as a focus target, but I find I can quickly select the tank from my party list. Now, there's a newer setting in the game called auto-targeting that you may want to turn on as well. With this setting turned on, performing an attack action will automatically attempt to select a target when available while simultaneously performing that action against it. You can also tweak that auto-target selection between line of sight or closest range. I prefer to have this set to closest range. This feature really helps to save some button presses as you're adventuring across the world. Now there is one more setting here called Full Auto Target. What this does is if you have no target currently selected and an enemy does damage to you, you will automatically soft target it. It's just another convenience item. The last type of targeting I'll talk about is Ground Targeting, and this only occurs for certain actions with an area of effect. For these you'll place a ring in the ground and your ability will take effect there. For most of these, you can actually adjust them by moving your camera with the right stick, but you can also adjust them manually using the controls shown in the HUD. Note that if you do move the ring in that way, it will preserve for the next time you use the action. I found that placing the ring a slight distance from my character and then using the camera controls to manipulate it from then on works really well for me. So this was my quick, no-nonsense guide for better targeting using a controller. I hope it helped you out. If you have any questions or comments, I'd love to hear them. Please leave them down below. And along with that, be sure to check the video description. If I've gotten any updates, I'll be sure to leave them there over time. Alright everyone, thanks for watching the video, have fun adventuring, and take care.